introduction. And um, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Global India Business Forum for the wonderful hospitality and giving me the opportunity to be here. Um, from yesterday when we arrived, um, they have taken care, good care of us. And me and my wife are very thankful for all the assistance and the hospitality that you have extended to us. Um, um, when we talk about Maldives, yes, it's a dream destination for all of us. But um, I think there is more than the tourist aspect of it that we need to talk about. Um, a lot of us tend to forget the opportunities that we have. Um, that's the reason why I don't want to put on a video like my colleague, uh, Ambassador of Mongolia did. If I did, everyone would not listen to me. <laughs> anyway, um, we are a very small, uh, I would say, an island nation uh, where it's only 1% of the Maldives is land. So I would rather put it this way. We are a large ocean state. So that gives us more opportunities than us labeling as a small island state. Uh, of course, um, we have 1,192 coral islands um, situated in the Indian Ocean. Um, naturally, we are grouped in 26 atolls, but uh, for administrative reasons, we have divided into 19 atolls. Um, of these islands, uh, 188 are inhabited. And we have now developed 175 as tourist resorts. Um, there's more in the pipeline. There's potential for that as well. Um, our GDP per capita is 10,000 US dollars. Um, very, I would say, um, it's only less than a month ago, uh, we have got a new government. And the new government vision is to continue uh, the business that we have been doing, especially with India. Uh, India's relation with Maldives uh, does not limit to the time of our establishment of diplomatic relations in 1965. It goes way beyond. People to people contact have been there, trade have been there, even before uh, we established uh, our diplomatic relations. So uh, the relation between India and Maldives is very strong, and it will continue to be strong. Uh, unlike um, what you may have heard from the media, the relation will continue to be strong. Um, the current government focuses uh, the Maldivian economy on sustainable policies uh, to develop tourism and fisheries industry, uh, diversification of economic base, creation of critical infrastructure that would support balanced growth of business and employment prospects. Um, of course, foreign direct investment play, will play a crucial role in the economic development of Maldives. And for that reason, we acknowledge the importance of foreign investment and continue to recognize its importance in our economic development. But let me then uh, focus a little bit more on specific areas that the government now focuses on uh, de development. One of that is uh, Mali Commercial Harbor. As you know, Maldives lies within uh, the International <coughs> Maritime Room route between East and the West. And we believe that there is a lot of potential in a commercial harbor. Um, currently, the Mali Commercial Harbor 
um, is has reached its maximum servicing capacity, and because of that, um, the businesses are facing bottlenecks and uh, increasing costs. So the government has decided to uh, relocate the central port, but within the greater Mali region, and for that, the new port would be expanded um, with the state-of-art technologies and efficient clearing mechanism. The port is planned to be developed with large-scale warehousing options, modern facilities for cargo handling and export pro processing zones. Um, we believe that there is a lot of potential for investors to come into Maldives and um, work with us to find uh, ways to maximize uh, your potential as well. Uh, let me move on to the second area that we... Um, <coughs> We are geographically located in a strategic position. Um, because of that, um, we want the economy to be, um, we want to expand our economy, not focus on the central area, but uh, to the north of Maldives as well. Um, the country's strategic location um, places within the proximity of emerging Asian markets and powerhouses, um, such as India. Um, as you know, um, when you think of north of Maldives, uh, where um, we are developing, we are expanding our, one of the international airports, Animadu, um, with the Indian assistance. Um, Hanimadu is just less than an hour away from Trivandrum, so it's that close. And um, with the expansion of Hanimadu Airport, uh, we are expecting to receive about 1.3 million tourists, which again uh, gives opportunity to expand other sectors as well. Um, tourism being our main economic source, um, it focuses, uh, it gives opportunity for trade. We import basically everything from elsewhere and our, one of the biggest um, trading partner is India. Um, so we, we import about 400,000 plus, 400, 400 million plus uh, from India worth of goods and uh, goods from India. But the, the trade, there is a trade imbalance, uh, I would say, uh, which um, we export only uh, scrap metals to India. Uh, that's about 13 million. But uh, there is also a factor that we have missed uh, the we all have missed, which is um, the Maldivian tourist or the Maldivians who travel to India. Um, about 40% of the Maldivians who travel abroad uh, visit India for medical and leisure purposes. They travel in an Indian aircraft, stay in an Indian hotel, spend their money to the Indian economy, which is being not reflected in our trading figures. So I would assume the figure could be more than, uh, of course, would be more than the 13 million that is reflected here. But um, having said that, there is also opportunity for trade, especially small businesses, uh, because uh, we have a product uh, that is already in market the Maldivian tuna. Um, we export to Europe and also Southeast Asia. And that's a product that can be, I don't see the product in India yet, 
and that is an opportunity that you can tap in and bring the product into India. India is a big market where you can bring in and re-export to elsewhere as well. Um, in the north, um, we are focusing on the top three atolls, Alif, Hadal and Shavin Atoll, uh, where we want to create um, integrated development projects such as maritime trade logistics, global shipping, um, industrial developments, all these related to tourism and fisheries. Um, similar to North, uh, we also want to develop the South as well. South also has um, an airport, which is an international airport, which is also being developed uh, with the assistance of Indian government. Um, so the expansion would also create additional opportunities in the south as well. Uh, similar to north, um, the south also would be focused on uh, uh, industrial, tourism, real estate and agricultural development projects. Uh, since climate change is a big issue for Maldives, um, we currently, we, the energy that is produced is from diesel. And we want to make sure that we face out the diesel as soon as possible. Um, previous government planned to do it by 2030, but um, it's a very challenging target and uh, I think uh, with the new government, uh, new targets would be set uh, in the days to come. But um, being a tropical country, uh, sun is 20, uh, 365 days available. So uh, renewable energy, uh, especially solar energy, is a op uh, opportunity where um, there is plenty of potential for investors to go in. Um, let me talk about fisheries. Um, fisheries industry is a key industry for the Maldives, um, especially the Maldivian community, um, which directly <coughs> links to the islanders. Um, their main source of revenue comes from fisheries. And um, we want to expand and introduce aquaculture and mariculture into Maldives. And hence, we want to explore how best we can work with um, investors from India or R&D from India to see whether um, the collaboration can be expanded in this area. Um, similar to fisheries, um, agriculture, as I said, 90% um, of the food that we eat is imported and the um, majority of them comes from India. We, our population is about half a million, but we, when it, when it comes to food, we have to talk about the 1.8 million tourists who visit the Moody's as well. So it's not a small population that we need to focus when it comes to food. So quality food is essential, especially for the tourism sector and producing quality food is a challenge <coughs> at, this, at this moment in Maldives uh, because of limited, as I said, limited land space. So innovative ways have to be found. Um, I know there are 
uh, hydroponics, uh, vertical farming. Um, we don't need space or the climate anymore to produce uh, a high quality products that is required for the tourism industry. At the moment, most of the uh, resorts, they supply food, um, uh, basically import every week. Uh, and some of the food that comes, they have to bring in uh, two or three times a week as well. And that's very expensive for them to run the, that's one of the reasons why um, the cost of uh, stay in all this gets expensive as well and therefore um, I know um, there are companies who have invested in R&D especially in agriculture so the opportunity is open and I invite you all to go there explore and invest in them <coughs> Of course, um, real estate is a big uh, opportunity in the Maldives. Um, government is also seeking affordable housing um, to address existing growing demands. Uh, for housing, uh, as, as a result, um, the government has allocated um, over 9,000 plots of land uh, for development of um, housing product, um, affordable housing. So there is opportunity in that area as well. Um, even with the vision to expand north and south, there is infrastructure <laughs> development projects uh, in the north and the south as well. So it's not only based in the capital, a greater Mali area, but also throughout the country as well. Um, of course, I mentioned about healthcare. Um, the the Maldivians traveling to India, and we want to see um, quality healthcare. India is famous for its quality of healthcare and um, throughout. So we want to see that quality of healthcare in the Maldives uh, through Indian investments. And um, we want to expand and see whether we can work with the Indian uh, companies, especially um, establishment of uh, uh, health laboratory and drug rehabilitation centers. Um, drug is a big issue in Maldives. Uh, we, being an ocean state, it's always challenging to um, monitor what is being reported. So it, it has been a big challenge for the government and uh, we want to see that we can work with um, India and find ways that we could address the challenges. Well, um, let me say um, why invest in Maldives? Um, you can have 100% um, foreign ownership if you invest in Maldives. Um, we have investment guarantee laws that have been in place. Um, provision is there for overseas arbitration when it comes to disputes. Um, long-term contractual agreements and long-term lease of lands is available. Um, long-term, in the sense, we can we talk about 50 to 99 years lease, so it's available. Um, there is no foreign exchange restrictions and also um, repatriation of earnings, of profits. So I 
strongly believe that uh, <coughs> there is opportunity with these uh, incentives, there is opportunity for you all to uh, consider investing in Maldives in different areas. And I, I specifically not mentioned about tourism sector because you all know about tourism sector. But then again, um, I wanted to highlight one issue, uh, which is um, when, when I meet someone and I introduce myself from all this, and everyone says it's a beautiful country, but it, but expensive. That's the most common thing I hear, and I always tell them that, of course, it is beautiful and expensive, but today we have introduced um, guest houses uh, to 